What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy and I'm going to be doing my ranking for my top 10 favorite movies of 2005. This is part of my top 10 Tuesdays where I do a ranking of my 10 favorite movies of each year since I was born. And it's also part of my top 10 Tuesdays. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get going. Coming in at number 10 is... Walk the Line. This is a James Mangold movie. A, a biopic about Johnny Cash, who is my favorite singer of all time. I absolutely love Johnny Cash. And Joaquin Phoenix is really, really great in this movie. He does a really excellent job playing Johnny Cash. And Reese Witherspoon is really good as June Carter as well. She does a really great job. And the chemistry between the two of them works really, really well. And it's just one of the best biopics out there. It's a really, really good movie and everything. Even if you're not a fan of Johnny Cash, I think you could appreciate this movie. It's still just a really good story. And everything, and it's a really good movie. So, Walk the Line is number 10, and number 9 is Madagascar. I really love this movie, it's a really fun DreamWorks animation movie. I haven't actually watched this one in a good minute, but it, it's still one that I've always really loved. I love the, uh, the characters, uh, especially, I think my favorite characters are the penguins. I just absolutely love them, they're, they're hilarious. Everything, but I also like all of our main characters and stuff. My favorite is probably Alex, but I also like Melman quite a bit too. And but I like Marty and Gloria as well. They're they're all just really likable characters, and it's just a really fun movie. So Madagascar is number nine, and number eight is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I really like this movie quite a bit. It's a really fun and entertaining movie. And everything, but it is not my most favorite Harry Potter movie. I feel like it's a pretty weak adaptation of, the, of that book, and everything. Um, and there, there are a lot of things that could have been better with it. But over time, as time has gone on, I've grown to to like this movie a lot more than I did as a kid or a teenager when this movie first came out. But it's just okay. It's not the best Harry Potter movie, but I like the. Uh, the Yule Ball scene, it's really good, and the, under the underwater scene when he goes into the lake is a lot of fun and stuff too, so there's some good moments in here, but it just isn't my most favorite movie in the franchise, so Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is number 8, and number 7 is Brokeback Mountain. Now this is a movie that I've gotten a lot of hate for liking and everything, but I absolutely love this movie. It's a really, really good love story about these two cowboys who... Uh, go on this mountain and they're, they're away for a few months and everything during the winter time taking care of this herd of sheep and everything and uh, as time goes on they start having a love affair and they it follows like their romance throughout so many years and everything and over the years they're, they're uh, how they face complications with their personal lives and being together and the struggle of wanting to be with each other but not wanting other people to know and all that. It's just a really good movie and everything. It's a sad movie too. It, it, it's heartbreaking at times but it's a really really good movie. So Brokeback Mountain is number seven and number six is War of the Worlds. I absolutely love this movie. It's a really really great Steven Spielberg movie. It's a great Tom Cruise movie. It's a, just a really good adventure movie um, with a lot of suspense and thrills along the way and everything. I love this movie and when I think of great alien invasion movies this is actually one of my personal favorites and everything and out of all the alien movies that Spielberg has done this is probably my second favorite after after E.T. but I really really like this one quite a bit. It's just got such a good story and everything and great performances and everything. Tom Cruise is really good in here and Dakota Fanning gives a really great performance and it's just a really, really good time. So, War of the Worlds is number six and number five is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, I'm not going to say too much about my opinion on this movie because I'm going to be reviewing it before too long, but I do absolutely love this movie. I think this is one of the best remakes ever made. It's a really good story. It's 
one of Tim Burton's best movies too, I think, personally. And I just really enjoyed this movie. I think Johnny Depp was amazing as Willy Wonka and does a really, really great job. And I, I really like Freddie Highmore as Charlie and everything. He, he actually is probably the highlight of the movie. He just does such a great job playing him and everything. But everybody is good in this movie and everything. And it holds up pretty well. There, there's some CGI that might not hold up too well, but for the most part, this movie holds up pretty well and it's still a really good time and everything. So Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is number five. And number four is... Batman Begins. This is a really, really good movie. I <clears throat> absolutely love this movie. It, it's got a lot of really good moments and stuff in here. It, it's got a really good story, and um, Christian Bale is just really, really great in here as Bruce Wayne. I, I'm not big on his Batman voice, but I think he's great as Bruce Wayne and everything in the whole trilogy, but especially this movie. I think it's the one where he stands out the most. He does a really good job in this movie. Liam Neeson and Killian Murphy are great as Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow. They do a really great job as well and everything. And it's just a really good origin story. It's one of my favorite superhero mo movie origin stories for sure. And it's one of the most underrated uh, Batman movies. Like, I know everybody does, a lot of people do love it and stuff, but it never gets talked about in the same way that other movies do. I mean, like, even other two movies in the Dark Knight trilogy they get more recognition than this one does for some reason I don't get it because this one is really really great I don't think it's quite as good as the Dark Knight but it, it's definitely better than the Dark Knight Rises and everything and I think it deserves to more credit than what it gets and everything so Batman Begins is number four and number three is The Chronicles of Narnia The Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe this movie is a blast from start to finish. It's a really, really great fantasy movie and everything. I remember when it first came out, I had just finished reading the book and went to see the movie, and I was blown away at how good of an adaptation this movie is. It follows the book really, really well and everything, and its visuals and sets and stuff hold up really, really well. There's not much about this movie that has really aged poorly at all and everything. Like, I was really impressed with how well this movie has aged when I rewatched it a few years ago everything or a couple years ago and it, it's just it's a really fun movie it's one of those really heartwarming movies that you can't help but love <clears throat> and everything and it's got a really good cast a really good story it's a really good movie so the chronicles of Narnia, the lion the witch in the wardrobe is number three and number two is the 40 year old virgin i absolutely love this movie this is a really hilarious uh, comedy and everything. It, it's the movie that really got me into raunchy comedies and I just absolutely love this movie. Steve Carell is hilarious in here and everything and then the whole uh, supporting cast are great. You got uh, um, uh, Seth Rogen, Paul Rudd, um, Leslie Mann, a bunch of people that show up in his movies all the time appear in this movie and they're all really really good and the, the story is entertaining and it doesn't fully go the way you would expect it to but that's kind of what I like about it is it it's a slice of life movie but it's done really really well everything so the 40 year old virgin is number two and my number one favorite movie of 2005 is Star Wars episode 3 Revenge of the Sith I absolutely love this movie. It's a really, really great time and a great ending to the prequel trilogy. It, it really has some really awesome fight scenes and stuff. The fight scene between Obi-Wan and Anakin at the end of it is just absolutely amazing. And everything in the, the, the fight between Yoda and Darth Sidious is also is really cool. It's just a really, really fun, epic ending to this trilogy. And I really enjoy this movie quite a bit. So, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, is easily my number one favorite movie of 2005. It, it's a movie that's been one of my favorites ever since it first came out. It's still one of my favorite Star Wars movies. And it's just a really great movie. So, anyway, let me know in the comments what your favorite movies of 2005 were. If you don't want to do a full ranking, tell me your favorites and least favorites. 
Hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day, everybody.